nice to sort of see a film which uh, united people across the political spectrum yes. <laughs> and all, all come together and like you know <laughs> stand up against child sex trafficking and all be on the same page yeah Welcome to Woodshed Reviews, where we look at films old and new, good and bad. And today we're going to look at the new film from Alejandro Monteverde, Sound of Freedom, starring Jim Caviezel. Yeah, and I think probably everyone watching this will have heard of Sound of Freedom at the very least, because it's certainly not been shy of publicity. You have been at this for 12 years. My country tis of thee. Why are you doing it? Because God's children are not for sale. So there's a lot to talk about um, in within and without the film, I suppose. Yeah, mm. yeah, but maybe we should concentrate on the film because many others don't. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, we'll we'll do a well. I, I don't think we can totally avoid the 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 real world consequences of it, but yeah, let's do a let's do an actual film review of a film. Yeah, normal. I mean, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. Isn't it? Yeah. Uh, starring Jim Caviezel, who's um, not been on the radar much of late. No, um, I've always been a big fan. Uh, um, I remember seeing him first in Terence Malick's Thin Red Line. What difference do you think you can make one single man in all this madness? If you die, it's going to be for nothing. And of course, as uh, Jesus and The Passion of the Christ. That was a controversial film itself, so yeah. he picks the roles sometimes. Oh, he sure does, yeah. <laughs> this is based on a true story. Tim Ballard, a special agent for Homeland Security, who um, basically tracks down child predators in, in the US and at the border. Senor Timoteo, tu rescatas niños, verdad? Quizá puedas ayudarme a encontrar a mi hermana. Yeah, we see them both being abducted, sort of in plain sight uh, at the start of the film, and that kind of starts the ball rolling in this this story based on two events. Yeah, so, so Tim Ballard's character, we sort of see him. He's 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 kind of in a, a place where he's just prosecuting and catching the sort of perpetrators and distributors of the sort of child pornography. So, um, there's a little bit of a him sort of befriending one of these uh, paedophiles or child sex offenders or whatever you want to call them to yeah. sort of like gain his trust to get into this murky sort of underworld. That's kind of the bulk of the first part and then the, the main film is a sort of setting up a sort of entrapment kind of um, ring uh, luring these um, child sex traffickers to bring the kids to him and posing as a sort of buyer who wants to set up a, a sort of resort. Yeah, on an island, isn't it? Yeah. So it's all pretty dark stuff, but it's handled, I thought it was handled pretty well. I thought it was a very gripping thriller. It didn't go into too much horrific detail about what goes on with the children. Yeah, and there are two main child actors really good. The brother and sister, I thought they were excellent. And yeah, again, it, it just kind of towed that line pretty well. I, I mean, it's going to, I mean, a film like this, it's going to be uncomfortable viewing whatever, but it never felt that it was, that it crossed the line or anything. Yeah, it just sort of like it would always kind of like you. It would, the camera would pull away, or the scene would stop, give you the idea of what obviously uh, the horrific things that are happening in this world. There was nothing too over the line, I think. So for a, a general audience, I, I think would would probably not have too much issues with that sort of aspect of it. I don't think it's a tough film to watch because you know what's happening and yeah, it generates a quite an emotional response. Um, and this is. Trafficking, it's something that's been going on a long time, and according to the film, it's something that's getting worse, particularly mm. in the United States. Yeah. Um, so it's a real world issue. Yeah. So, in that regard, I thought it was an important film. Uh, it's about real life heroes doing a great thing, and it's largely based on true events, maybe embellish a few things for narrative. Well, sure, that was, I mean, if we're trying to stick to the review thing, but one of the things that kind of, as a lot of people, obviously, detractors of this film, one of the lesser kind of uh, points that, they would, that would maybe be made was, oh, it's been exaggerated, this didn't really happen. Mm -hmm. 
And it's like, do you, can you point me to a film based on two events that wasn't, kind of, you know? Exactly. I, I think as, as far as these films go, I think this one, a lot of the events in the film did actually happen. Because it was, I mean, the main operation, they save about 50 kids or something like that. And I think it was almost double that that they said. Yes, apparently there's a documentary coming out about the real story okay. um, called Triple Take. So that's going to be interesting. But yeah, I think there was a lot more children saved, mm -hmm. but there was also adults that were saved as well. Yeah, yeah, that had been in it so long. It yeah, like mm -hmm. it is one of that things where it's like, yeah, point point me to a film based on two events that isn't you know taking some license with events and characters and situations and stuff like that. It's not really much of a, a criticism, you, you know. Absolutely. I mean, even if none of what happens in the film actually happened, yeah, still shedding light on a real problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, and I think the studio, Angel Studios, they've even kind of on the website, they've even kind of stated, you know, quite detailed, I think, what was true in the film and what was exaggerated or what was kind of done for, um, you know, cinematic effect. I think the main thing was probably the, there's a sort of, after the main sting operation, there's a sort of an extra bit that's put on and that's kind of feels obviously kind of dramatized and yeah. and added on because he's trying to although he's rescuing all these kids he's specifically focused on this one girl who he wants to find um it's kind of like a mission he's not going to be able to to rest until he does this she he assumes she's going to be within this cohort of, of kids and she's not so he goes on this separate mission that bit did feel on the one hand a little out of place but on the other hand in and of itself i felt it was done well yeah. Um, it's quite grounded. It wasn't yeah. over the top. There wasn't massive shootouts. And no, it didn't, didn't turn into First Blood or anything like that. Um, it, the, I mean, there's a shootout and a chase, but not really. If you think it's going to be like a sort of taken sort of thing, then you're going to be uh, disappointed. We're Homeland Security. You know we can't go off rescuing kids in Colombia. This job tears you to pieces. This is my one chance to put those pieces back together. I suppose that's a big part of it about the jurisdictions of that kind of stuff. And it's, there's not a lot of it in there, but there's a little bit of that. That's about as political, I think, as it gets. Yeah, and uh, I think true to life, I think he had to quit his job with Homeland Security. Yeah, in order to pers pursue this, yeah. Because that's, that's, that's brought up in the film, that they're sort of drawn a line as to what he can do. And he's in, he's at this point, I think he's sort of halfway in, he's got buyers, he's um, looking at a resort and people that are, backing them up and people that are going to be, you know, these predators are going to be bringing them the children and stuff. Um, and then he can't just kind of pull the plug himself, so he has to kind of um, uh, go go in, go rogue, I guess. It's over, Tim. Close up, get on a plane and, uh, and come back home. And in a better world, but we'd just be talking about this as a sort of really solid thriller about an important subject matter. Um. Yeah, and I think there's been a lack of these kind of films of late. I mean, I think back in the 90s, early 2000s, it'd be normal to see a film like this at the cinema. Yeah, you know, it was kind of on the back burner for five years, I think, in the Disney sort of vaults. There's a lot of sort of discussion about what was happening there. Yeah, and a lot of, yeah, the big streaming companies didn't pick, up, pick it up. Mm -hmm. um, so it was sitting there for a while. This film should not be garnering any controversy out with the subject matter itself that that this is actually uh, happening and, and 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 this is based on a, a true story and it feels fairly grounded in, in its telling of that story i would struggle to kind of say that there's anything that is below par in this film it's all shot directed acted pacing is all good but there's nothing to kind of like get in a you know get your panties in a, in a twist about in a film like this and everyone i've heard that's seen it you know I think it's a decent film and they recommend it to other people so yeah and that's maybe one of the yeah there's a sort of um pay it, the pay it forward thing that's that's garnered some controversy i mean just about everything that this film's done has garnered some controversy by buying a ticket for someone else or if your budget is tight share the already available free tickets with as many friends as you can or do both join us and millions of others as we ring sound of freedom and hope throughout the world um, which seems like a nice idea, but yeah. I think it's opened itself up to more controversy because it's like how many people are actually watching this film. That It's opened itself to that kind of criticism. It's a shame because, you know, I don't think that the pay it forward thing is, is something that's going to change cinema or going to catch on with every film. But No, it's, it's interesting. It's different. 
so certain films can probably um, utilise it, I, I think, and that's fine. I've read some bizarre reviews on it, uh, you know, people trying to dismiss it and brush it under carpet, hoping it'll go away. Um, there's so much, um, there's so much drama and idiocy behind this film, and um, it's 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 just frustrating. And, uh, and some of it, you know, is sort of queuing on stuff, which there's no queuing on stuff in this. No. At all. Um, Donald Trump likes the film, so therefore you can't like the film, you know, it's like, all right, you know, <laughs> whatever. I think Angel Studios are a Christian Bart kind of um, company, are they? Probably. Or doing kind of Christian films, but I didn't feel this was a religious film. There's a, you know, Christian message in it, but I mean, it's one that everyone, anyone with a soul can embrace. Yeah, I don't think you need to be um, of any sort of uh, creed or colour to sort of go, yeah, you know, I'm against child sex trafficking, you know. In the trailer, there's sort of lines, there's a famous, well, becoming famous line, I guess, um, the Jim Cafizzo delivers about God's children not being for sale. But it doesn't feel like a, a religious, moralistic kind of phrase or anything like that. It just feels like something that someone would say. Yeah, um, it works as a powerful tagline as well. Yeah, like, definitely. Yeah. Good line for the trailer. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did quote scripture, I think something Jesus said about putting a millstone around your neck and throwing you into the sea. Oh, the, you when, he's, a child, when yeah. he's, just, he's just about to spring the trap on the paedophile at the start of the film, yeah, or near early on. Yeah, okay. I, 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 but, I mean, I didn't I don't recognise that line. And even yeah. the, if I did, it's like, yeah, it's not heavily heavily hitting over the head with any of this kind of stuff. Nothing about it seems to <laughs> have any controversy apart from the subject matter itself, yeah. which, which should be taken you know, pretty seriously. But yeah, it's a serious subject matter. It, it happens all over the world in varying mm -hmm. degrees, and um, if it brings attention to it. Yeah, I mean, it's a huge problem, obviously, and I think that for the facts and figures at the end of it are anything to go by, it's like a bigger issue, than, you know, a bigger issue than slavery when it was legal ever was, and yet, you know, are, are we hearing as much about that as we are about like sort of you know reparations for a hundred years ago? You know, and that that kind of stuff. I, I don't think we're hearing about it as much as we should be. You know, so yeah, I mean, fair play. We're talking about extracting an eleven-year-old girl from an army of rebels. Not just her. I'm talking about rescuing hundreds of kids. Um, it's, it doesn't feel like any of the stuff that's being criticised of like a QAnon conspiracy or, you know, heavily kind of religious, kind of, even if it was, it, does that matter? Do you know what yeah. I mean? Gosh, people should be able to be free to make these films. Well, I think that's probably, probably part of it is it's this sort of like um, call for diversity in everything, apart from sort of certain diversity of opinions or certain diversity of, you know, religious beliefs or, or these kind of things. And that's coming from someone who's a, an atheist and not someone who's, you know, but like, Anyone who's got that kind of belief, like Jim Caviezel, um, I think he clearly has mm -hmm. sort of Christian and maybe conservative kind of views and beliefs and stuff like that. But that's, you know, we like diversity of opinion, but not that, you know, <laughs> we're not having that in here, you know, so. That's very odd. Certainly Christianity gets it in the, in the neck. So uh, that's OK. That's all right to do, <laughs> you know. But. It's too ugly for polite conversation. But meanwhile, over two million children a year are being sucked into the deepest recesses of hell. Yeah, I mean, we've got the documentary coming out mm. and there's talk about a sequel. So it's not going away anytime soon. No. And, you know, maybe it shouldn't. No, definitely not. And I think, you know, it's, it's, just a, it's, a, it's a shame that um, we're not just being able to talk about the review of the film. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's bogged down in all this stuff. And then you kind of go and see it and you're like, what? <laughs> What's the issue? Yeah. What's the issue here? It does make you think, and you know, he try not to get too conspiratorial about it, but yeah, <laughs> there's too much going on to sort of go. You know, people that are pulling the strings with this stuff, yeah, have they got a vested interest in, in not? And I'm not a conspiracy theorist at all, but when people have got an issue with the subject matter of a film like this, yeah, you know, it does kind of raise alarm bells for you. Um, but I don't think it's entirely that. I think there's a lot of people who just don't want to see people who politically don't agree with them um, being making films and stuff like that. People like Jim Caviezel, so even someone as innocuous as uh, Chris Pratt, you know, who's um, I know he's kind of religious and um, has you know said some mild things that maybe you know if you're a 
liberal leaning lefty you might kind of get a bit huffy about. So then he's got to be kind of, you know, he's the worst, apparently he's the worst Chris of the Chris's. Uh, so um, <laughs> it's that sort of thing, you know. Um, and who doesn't like Chris Pratt, you know? I know. <laughs> it's pretty well made, nuts and bolts, solid thriller. It's missing a little bit of characterization for me. Yeah, there's not much with um, Mira Sorvino. No, hardly at all. Yeah, so it's good to see her in a film because uh, I think she was one of Weinstein's victims. Okay, right. I didn't, I didn't make that connection. Okay. So another one that was kind of blacklisted from Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I didn't, I didn't make that connection. But that's 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 a good point. So you quit your job, and you go and rescue those kids. But there wasn't much of her in it. No, and I, I did kind of want to see a bit more of that and the family dynamic and maybe a bit more of his sort of turmoil and stuff. Apparently in the sequel there will be more of that. Okay. I think it was, yeah, I think that was missing for me. Other than that, yeah, really solid thriller that you would have just kind of like enjoyed. Not, I mean, enjoyed is kind of the wrong word, but enjoyed it as a filmmaking mm -hmm. uh, experience, a film experience and that. Yeah. Uh, took something away from it, something to chew on, something to think about. Yeah. And then you would get on, you know, get on with your life, and and that would that would be it, you know. So it's uh, it's themes. This certainly stays with you. I mean, it's a mm -hmm. concerning theme, so yeah, it makes you think about it and uh, what, if anything, you can do about it. But yeah, I mean, it's it's something that's taken uh, having a go at, at, at doing that, you know, and not a lot of films are doing that. Certainly, not a lot of films that are getting traction. Or getting no, cinema, or getting bums and seats. In most films, I seem to just. It's just all about sedating you. <laughs> yeah, possibly. For me, uh, it's not it's not brilliant, but it's solid. So I'm going to say three and a half uh, <laughs> logs for me. Just, as I said, maybe missing, building up a little more characterization and stuff like that. And... Yeah, uh, I'll go with, with that for three and a half. I'll maybe go half a log higher, okay. give it four. Um, I thought it was a solid thriller. Mm -hmm. It's gripping, heart-wrenching, and stays with you. Um, I love the cinematography. Well edited, technically amazing, well acted. I uh, agree, it could have done a bit more characterization for sure. But yeah, um, I've got no complaints about this film. No, no. Wish there were more films like this. Yep. But that's just coming from us QAnon conspiracy theorists. So, yeah. We've reviewed the film. We've put the world to rights. Yeah. Well, we'll leave it there. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, hope you enjoyed the review. Check out the film if you can, if you haven't already. Um, but that's it for now. And uh, we'll see you next time. God bless. Hear that? That's the sound of freedom. <laughs> <laughs>